Hey friends, Mrs. Lawson here. It's good to see you again this week. Have you been on the lookout for signs of spring? Last week, I mentioned that I had noticed daffodils and crocuses pushing their way up toward the sunshine. Now, as I look around me, I see buds growing on tree branches. Some have already begun to open into tiny green leaves and others are still in the bud stage. And the other day, I saw a garter snake winding its way across the pond path for the first time in a few months. Changes are everywhere. As we look towards spring, we also have the joy of looking toward Easter. Hi, Jake. Hey, Bobby. Look at all your Easter eggs. I've always wondered, what do eggs have to do with Easter? I, I asked my dad about that. He said that for the Christian, the Easter egg has long been a symbol of new life in Jesus. And the early Christians of Mesopotamia even had the custom of staining eggs red at Easter in memory of Jesus' blood shed on the cross. Wow, that is interesting and explains the eggs at Easter. What are you working on? I'm cutting out these devotional cards. It's one of the activities my family does as we prepare our hearts for Easter. Just like we prepared our hearts during Advent before Christmas. Exactly. At Christmas, we are celebrating God's amazing gift of His Son Jesus being born. At Easter, we're celebrating God's amazing gift of salvation through Jesus' death and resurrection. How does your family use these cards? Several times throughout the weeks leading up to Easter, my parents put out a few cards in plastic eggs and hide them so my sister and I can find them after dinner. Then we talk about the picture on the card and how it reflects the Easter story. My dad reads the scripture that goes with the pictures. It's just one of the tools we use to focus on Jesus at Easter. Want to come over next week and do another activity? Sure! Thanks for including me. You're welcome! Thanks, Bobby and Jake. For the past few weeks, we've been learning about the life of Abraham and how we can always trust God to keep his promises. Let's head over to the newsroom now to hear the latest developments from Mr. Keyline. Welcome to the Good News News, your source for news that tells you how to live life and to love God. I'm your host, Nick Keyline, and I'm going to talk to you today about God's promises and his great love for us. Have you ever felt that God was far away? Have, have you ever been lonely? Well, God has a plan and he is in control. Not only does he have a plan, but we are part of it. God has revealed himself to us. He reaches down and meets us where we are and shows us how to live and invited us to be part of his plan. Let me illustrate this point by telling you a story. A long time ago, God revealed parts of his plan to Abraham and Abraham's son, Isaac. He told them they would be a great nation. He told Abraham his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. Isaac eventually had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau had a fight over a trick Isaac played on Esau over a bowl of stew. It's a great story. I encourage you to read it in your Bible. But the upshot is, Esau was so angry, Jacob feared Esau would kill him. Jacob was so afraid, he fled away from his family in fear for his life. He said goodbye to his mother Rebekah and father Isaac and left on a long journey. He left Beersheba and headed for his uncle's house. On the way there, he stopped to sleep for the night. He placed his head upon a rock and fell asleep. Wow, that sounds really uncomfortable, doesn't it? Treat your family well. You don't want to end up sleeping on a rock. <laughs> so Jacob had a dream. And I'm going to read from my Bible to tell you about that dream. This is in Genesis chapter 28, 12 through 15. And he had a dream. And behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its top reaching to heaven, and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your descendants. 
Your descendants shall also be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and in you and in your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Jacob awoke and marveled at the dream. He said, Surely the Lord is in this place. How awesome is this place? Jacob lifted up the rock that he had put his head on and poured oil on it. He called the place Bethel, which means house of God. Jacob promised God if God kept him safe, he would be his God and he would give God a tenth of everything he earned from then on. From there Jacob traveled to Haran where his uncle Laban lived. Uncle Laban taught Jacob a few lessons, but that's yet another story we won't touch on here. I wanted to point out a few things. Can God get to us? Yes, he can. Even if we're asleep on a rock, he can build a ladder or staircase from heaven to reach down and show us he is near. God sent us his son, a descendant of Abraham, so cool, as a bridge to us. And just as he himself promised Abraham that his descendants would be numerous as the stars in the sky, so he promises us if we accept his son Jesus, we will live forever with him. Did God keep his promise to Abraham? Yes, he did. Will he keep his promise we will live forever with him? Yes, he will. What a comfort in these hard times when we are lonely. I talk to God when I'm lonely. It's called praying. You should try it too. Thanks for joining me on this wonderful journey through God's word. I'm your host, Nick Keeline. May God bless you this day. Hi, Glendon friends. It's Miss Lum. This week, we learned about God sharing his promise to Abraham with Abraham's family. Here, God promises that Abraham's family will be as numerous as the stars. Today, I'm going to show you how to make these little origami stars to remind us of this promise. So if you'd like to make these with me, I will show you what you need. First, you will need some uh, strips of paper. These can be uh, pieces of paper that you've colored, or they can just be uh, colored pieces of paper. And you'll need some scissors if you'd like. And also you're going to need some dry hands. If your hands are a little bit wet, the paper uh, will get a little bit too soft to make the stars. So let's get started. And first, I'm going to take a strip of paper and I'm going to create a loop like this. And notice how I have one that has a little bit of a shorter tail and one end that has a longer tail. I'm going to take the longer tail and put it through the loop, kind of like I'm tying a knot, like this. Next, you're going to want to tighten your knot until it makes a pentagon shape, like this. And go ahead and flatten it, like this. Then you're going to want to take your smaller tail and fold it behind the pentagon. And take your longer tail and wrap it uh, tightly around the pentagon until you don't have any more paper left. If the end of your paper goes past the end of the pentagon, uh, you might need scissors to trim it, but I think mine is just fine. My next step will be to tuck this little end of paper behind this fold right here. Like this. So there are no loose pieces of paper hanging out. Next, you're going to either take your fingernail or a hard flat object and you're going to place it in the middle of one of the sides of the pentagon and you're going to gently push in. You'll see a little point form and you're going to repeat this on all five sides. And now you have a little star. 
I'm going to show you one more time with all of those steps put together. And now we have these stars as a reminder of God's promise to Abraham and Abraham's family. These stars also remind me that God keeps his promises too, which we've seen in the past couple of weeks. I hope that you enjoyed making this craft, and I will see you next time. Thank you, Miss Lum. The star reminds me of our visit with Mrs. Bufford a couple of weeks ago. She taught us that light from our own star, the sun, takes eight minutes to reach us. Light from the next closest star takes four years to reach us. Let's see what else we can discover about light today. Hello everyone! The days are getting longer and I really like the extra sunshine. We've been learning a lot about sunlight how it can bend or refract as it goes through glass or water, how you can separate it into different colors, and how fast it travels. But that's not all God created light to do. Let's check it out. Light travels in a straight line. So what happens when it bumps into something? It can't go around it. Well, it just bounces right off, and that's called reflection. If an object has a rough surface, the light will bounce off in many different directions and some of that light will bounce into our eyes. So that when we look at something, when we see something, what we're seeing is the light being reflected off of the object. When the surface of the object is shiny and smooth like this mirror, the light does not bounce off in many directions, just one. And so we see ourselves, not the mirror. That's why when we look into a mirror, we see what we call our reflection. So if light travels in a straight line, can it shine around a corner? It can if we use mirrors. This is a light maze I made out of Duplo blocks and I've put a chicken in the middle. We're going to use a flashlight. Does the flashlight shine on the chicken? What happens when we put in some mirrors? Now I can see the chicken. The light reflects off of each of the mirrors all the way around the maze until it's reflected off the chicken. We can use light reflection to make a fun way to look at the world. It's called a kaleidoscope. I took a cardboard tube and covered it with some paper just to make it look nicer. And then I took some foil paper and cut it to fit inside the tube. And I folded it into a prism shape with the shiny side in. Then you can put the shape inside of the cardboard tube and then hold it so that you can look at something through the tube. Rotate the tube and you'll see all kinds of interesting patterns show. Watch. Something else happens to light when it hits an object. Besides being reflected, the light can also be caught or absorbed. The yellow flowers are reflecting yellow light but absorbing all the other colors. The red flowers reflect red light and absorb the others. Something appears white when all the colors are being reflected or black when they're being absorbed. I'm glad God gave us eyes to see these beautiful colors. But you know, there's something else that God's creation reflects, His glory. God is amazing. The other day, I was looking at a color wheel, and I couldn't believe how many different shades of color there are. There are hundreds. Say, how about if we use color to share our thankful things this week? The closer we get to spring, the more color we will see. Are you thankful for pink cherry blossoms? The flash of green on a hummingbird's wing? How about the bright blue sky?
Of course, I'm also thankful for our green friend, Freddy. Hello. Do you remember when we watched how friends use their time, expertise, and abilities to help another friend cut down a tree in his yard? I'm so thankful for all the people who use their time and develop their skills to help others. Today, we get to see how someone used his expertise and equipment to grind the stump of the tree that was cut down. When Andy arrived, he laid down sheets of plywood to protect the grass and the walkway from the tire tracks and the weight of the stump grinding machine. Then he unloaded the stump grinder and walked it down to where the tree had been cut down, always protecting the way with the sheets of plywood. Then he used the plywood to make walls so the wood chips would not fly out of the area. Can you see the spinning blade at the front of the machine? When Andy lowers the blade, it will begin to shave the trunk of the tree. And as he steers the blade back and forth, it grinds off layers of wood until the trunk turns completely into little wood chips. With the job finished, it's time to walk the stump grinder back up the path, all the while protecting the walkway and the grass once again with the sheets of plywood until the machine is back on its trailer. Andy makes sure the machine is securely in place before he heads off to use his equipment and expertise at another place. It was nice meeting you, Freddie. Thanks for your help today. Thank you, Andy, for a job well done. It was a pleasure to work with you. Have you noticed that each season provides different opportunities to enjoy God's wonderful world? Spring invites us to get outside to work on projects around the yard, just like Freddie, to enjoy nature walks and sometimes puddle jumping, and to delight in the many colors that once again surround us. Friends, it has been so much fun visiting with you today. Thank you for visiting with me. I'll see you next time.